ever get this like weird fascination with those massive container ships? You know, the ones that look like they're hauling like an entire city across the ocean. Yeah, it's <laughs> kind of mind boggling how much stuff they actually carry. All our clothes, electronics, pretty much everything. Right. And you sent over this video about what happens when these um, titans of the sea, I guess you could call them, run into trouble, container ship accidents. Mm -hmm. Well, it's definitely a deep dive. Definitely. <laughs> and what's interesting, I think, is how these ships, these vessels, some longer than skyscrapers are tall, right? How they're both these incredible feats of engineering, but also like potential weak points in our global system. It's true, and the video really digs into that, how even small hiccups, like a little navigational error, can snowball into these huge EE problems. We're talking billions of dollars in delays, environmental disasters, the whole nine yards. Absolutely. And I think the video does a good job of highlighting the three main culprits. Navigational errors, unpredictable weather, and then of course the human element. Yeah, let's talk about those navigational errors for a second. I mean, you'd think with GPS and everything, it'd be pretty straightforward, right? You'd think so, but it's way more complicated than just plugging in an address. Imagine trying to steer a skyscraper, literally, through a narrow canal with wind, currents, the ship's own momentum to factor. Oh, for sure. And the video mentioned those tides, too. Yeah, miscalculating tides. Basically, if you don't account for the water level needing to be high enough, your ship runs aground. Multi-million dollar vessel stuck in the mud, all because someone misjudged the tide charts. Crazy. Okay, so then you've got Mother Nature throwing curveballs left and right, storms, those rogue waves, like walls of water appearing out of nowhere, right? strong currents. And it's not just those immediate threats. Climate change is making everything even more unpredictable. Stronger storms, rising sea levels, shifting currents. This is something the industry is actively dealing with, with very real consequences for safety. Makes you realize how important those folks on board are, their skill and expertise. Absolutely. Which brings us to the human element, right? The video really drives home how fatigue, lack of training, even just bad communication can lead to disaster. It's that old saying, the chain is only as strong as its weakest link. And humans, we're still part of that chain, even with all the technological advancements. Especially in an industry notorious for demanding hours and high pressure situations. Yeah, like the whole Ever Given situation in the Suez Canal back in 2021. That was a wake-up call, I think, for a lot of people. Definitely. It wasn't just about a stuck ship. It exposed how fragile our global supply chains really are. And the economic fallout, billions for the B, manufacturing consumer goods, you name it, it was impacted. And it's not an isolated incident either. The video mentioned the MS Cheshire, which caught fire a few years back, and the MV Wakashio, which ran aground off the coast of Mauritius, causing that massive oil smell. Yeah, each accident has its own unique circumstances, but they all highlight the very real environmental risks these huge ships pose. We're not just talking economic loss here. The impact on ecosystems, on the planet is huge. So it's a bit of a sobering thought. Where do we go from here? Is there any good news? Well, the good news is these incidents force us to take a hard look at the industry and make changes. This is renewed focus on safety, a push for better training, more advanced technology, stricter regulations, all in the name of preventing future accidents. Learning from our mistakes only on a global scale, right? Exactly. We're seeing some really fascinating developments, too. Autonomous ships are being tested. More sophisticated weather routing systems, improved training protocols for crews, all with the goal of making maritime shipping safer and more sustainable. It makes you think, though, as you're going through all these sources, what if the answer isn't just bigger ships or fancier tech? What if it's about rethinking our whole relationship with global trade? Something to ponder, right?